what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel today we're going to be doing an install of our spring kits on this 2019 kona blue gt350 So this car will be getting our front coilover conversion kit, um, but we did a video on that. So I'll put a tag up here to the Mach 1 install video, uh, but they're essentially the same. Um, but this car will also be getting our rear spring kit. So if you watch the other video, uh, you know that uh, here's the front kit. Um, we got our top perches, lower perches, springs and shims. Here's our rear kit that we will be kind of highlighting, um, our lower adjustable perch. You can see it's got the threaded jack bolt, so you kind of just turn it up and down to raise and lower your ride height. And where are they? They're somewhere. Um, but they use a two and a half inch by six inch coilover spring, so that way you got a bunch of spring rate options. So yeah, I guess that's about it for the kits. Uh, we'll get to it. So very first thing we did, you can see we marked out uh, heights around the car on the splitter and above each wheel. And we also took a camber measurement the rear on these being a subframe and all the control arms end up just staying with the subframe in place uh, so we won't really need to do an alignment it'd be good to check it um, but the rear should be pretty easy so we'll get this thing jacked up and get going all right so we're moving along and you can see we got the spring out <clears throat> this car had stock springs on it which means we had to kind of drop everything a little bit more than you would if you already had some lowering springs. You can see we had to undo the strut. You can also see it has cradle lockouts on it. Um, so I think the other side, even with the bolts loose, it just wasn't really coming down. So anyways, uh, we were able to get it. Another unique thing was these aftermarket um, sway bar end links are longer than stock. So the sway bar was higher which means we had to undo them to kind of get the spring out of this hole. Um, but at this point, we're kind of ready to put our stuff in. So at this point, we're ready to put in our lower and upper perch. All right, so the top perch just kind of goes in like this and sits up. And then you'd want that T-nut to drop just enough to catch those uh, studs that are in there. There we go. And once you feel it lock in, then just finish tighten up with a wrench. So at this point, uh, we're gonna put the whole subframe back up because it, it'll actually be a little bit easier to do this lower perch uh, with everything bolted up because we need to get uh, our hand underneath of it so we can get the jacks and everything out of the way. So at this point, we're gonna do the other side uh, and then put everything back up. All right, guys, so we are all bolted back up and torqued on everything. And at this point, this is where our lower perch goes in. So a little hard to get angle, camera angle in here. So it sits in there like that. You shouldn't have really much play at all. This one feels pretty good. We're gonna take a quick side note. So just, just so you can see it better, uh, my control arm is sitting on the, sitting on my workbench. And it literally just drops in right here. So you can see how mine is the tiniest bit tighter. <clears throat> now these control arms, uh, the casting from Ford, this little bit right here, you can see how it may not be perfectly round. I almost have a tiny bit of a spot right here with a little bit of a, uh, I'll call it like a casting flash line or whatever. So worst case scenario, you might need to get a tiny little file if there's a bit of like a casting flash line right along here somewhere. Um, but it really shouldn't be much, if anything at all. And then another thing to note, we have a set screw on this lower threaded perch here, which personally I like to put, uh, this would be the rear of the car. It's just kind of the easiest to come in from the rear here to get that set screw to lock in your jacking lug when your ride height is set and everything and then this little donut underneath the little donut goes underneath and use the hardware and these two holes to kind of lock it all in and then you know here's your adjustment bolt all right so here it is sitting in the control arm and if we go underneath 
kind of see how that lower donut locks it all in and you know here's your turn this up to raise the car down to lower the car and it might be a little hard to see but the set screw is right here so easy enough to get in to lock that down once we set our ride height all right so here it is all in we got our oops upper perch obviously the spring lower perch and again to go up and down i'm just turning that jack bolt underneath and to swap springs all you got to do is just turn this all the way down um turn the jack bolt all the way down and you get enough room to just pull the spring out if you want to change spring rates as well all right so at this point uh the rears are in and i know earlier i mentioned this car is also getting our front kit so you can see our front, uh, we call it a coilover conversion kit with our top perch, uh, lower perch with shims to set the ride height. So we're at the point now where we're going to be setting the ride height. Um, we may have to add or remove some shims. We have quarters, eighths, and sixteenths. A sixteenth is not in here at the moment. And then like I know I mentioned on the rear, we just have to turn up, oh, where is it? We just have to turn our jack lug up or down to get the height where we need it. All right guys, so as you can see, we are back on the ground. My hands are extremely dirty right now. <laughs> this particular customer wanted a half inch lower, which was easy enough to do with our front kit. Uh, the rear, we ended up doing a quarter inch lower um, based off of the wheel well, or uh, I guess um, wheel well gaps. You know, we, we think it looks pretty good. So a little lower in the rear, uh, half inch lower in the front. So at this point, uh, customer is gonna get it corner balanced and aligned. I'm gonna send them home with plenty of shims. The rear, like I mentioned several times now, is just turn that bolt up or down. So this car was a little bit interesting. The front, I'll show you our measurements. So you can see right here on the, oops. So you can see right here on the fender, it was 28 and a half, you know, straight down to the ground. <clears throat> if we go around to the driver's side, about the same spot on the fender was 28. Um, so we measured the rockers on the car and the factory springs who knows if there was a little bit of variance in the springs i also thought maybe the perch uh how do i explain this the perch i got a set of gt springs right here but how this perch is welded to the strut body you know could that be a tiny bit off it, it was just, it's just kind of I'll, I'll, I'll just call it interesting that the one side was a, a little bit lower than the other um so this car actually has a different amount of shims front left to front rear but we were able to kind of get everything down evenly i hope that hope that all makes sense uh but like i mentioned customer is going to corner balance it um so that's easy enough to do now with our kit front and rear um but yeah haul in it was a fun little project fun day long day <laughs> uh, but i hope you guys enjoyed it please hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one